Yo, what's up? I hope everyone here has been tailing my bets. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a bunch of bets. I'm really excited about them. I'm really excited about these live streams. We, if you would have tailed everything on live stream, since we started this on 928, you'd be up 6.7K. So we've definitely been running a bit hot. Yesterday, as a recap, we won our baseball play which is obviously quite exciting. We've been destroying this fantasy company, uh, which is a competitor to prize picks called Thrive Fantasy. So yesterday I had Nick Allen. This is the one we gave out, was our biggest play yesterday. Nick Allen to record a hit. Guy had two hits. Baseball. Who would have thought we'd be the best baseball bettors of all time in player props? Then we have Eugenio Suarez, not to get a run. So two sharp bets, just using math, just using logic, you know, um, kind of probability to get an edge over the sports books and continue to win long term. So there's a sheet in the description with all of the bets. So you'll be able to tail them and also just track along. See positive EV betting in real time, what it could do for you. And if mathematical sports betting makes sense compared to following sports and trying to bet on sports, because I can guarantee you, your profits will be higher when you implement a mathematical betting strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some bets. Pretty simply, we're going to look for some good bets. Hopefully the site speeds up a bit. It seems a bit slow. And then we're going to find some opportunities out there. So there's two plays on prize picks we can see. But this is the play that looks especially interesting. We have under three and a half first half total runs in Mets Nationals. So what I like to do is kind of when you can't see as many sports books, is you can just like open up the odds in a new tab. So I believe this is a double header. It is a double header. I don't know why I said I believe. But what we can do is just kind of take a look. Obviously, the Mets are very good at pitching. You can see this is an ARB to bet 365, like – Looking across the market, no other sports books giving us better than plus 105. We should have pretty high confidence that this bet is very good. What we want to do is go to the second game, then we want to go to first half total runs, and then you want to go to alternate total runs, and then we want to go to under three and a half, and we want to hammer it for the max they give us, which is 196.70. And that's our first bet for this live stream. Under half, three and a half, first half total runs. Mets Nats, pretty incredible bet. Hopefully you guys are able to tail it under. Why is this text so small? So what we can do is just kind of increase the size of the text and get back to it. So, nope. There we go. That's a beautiful text size. I hope you all can see it. So we have first half under Mets versus Nats game two. So we hit this for 196.70 at plus 122 odds. And this bet is for 10-4. So we want to format this accounting, and then we want to format this like odds. So there we go. Pretty exciting stuff. So that's the first bet we got. First half under in the Mets game. And then if you're like, well, okay, well, what's the profit margin of that bet? Well, we bet 196.70 on it. So this is kind of how you think about sports betting. We bet 196.70 on this play. So that's pretty cool because we have our first bet. On the live stream, which is definitely going to win. There's no reason we can't win every single bet we give out on this live stream. So this bet has a 4.87% edge. We hit it for 196.70. So the bet is $8 or 958 in profit margin. If you tried to give me $8 cash, I wouldn't take it. I want 196. Uh, given my stake, 196.70, I know the bet's worth 958. Right? And it's just, again, logical sports betting looking for value. You know, these markets are very efficient. There's millions and hundreds of millions of dollars bet on the MLB every day. You're not outsmarting the bookmakers by knowing sports. You're outsmarting the bookmakers by knowing this kind of like, you know, you can learn the formulas for like no vague fair odds, you know, as exciting of a formula as it is, you know, you can like read this and learn this kind of, you know, oh, no big odds is plus 108.5, but kind of the general premise is like sportsbooks charge a 4 to 5% spread, which is known as the VIG, the juice, whatever you want to call it. And all you're trying to do is beat that. So value is what beats that long term. 
then you're trying to find as many bets with an edge as possible and place as many as you can on a daily basis. It's really that simple. Not every bet has to win. You'll notice when we do all these live streams, we'll have losing days. We'll lose some bets. We lost our first five bets we gave out on the live stream. No, six bets. We lost our first six bets we gave out on the live stream. But then UTSA made us 2.5K. So, like, there's variance. Just because a bet has a profit margin doesn't mean it's guaranteed to win. But, again, the sheet with all of our bets is in the description. So, hopefully, we keep winning. Any plays for Thrive Fantasy? I got you, bro. And then let's see prize picks and underdog EV plays. There we go. We got a lot of people who are on the fantasy train. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of these fantasy plays. Now everyone likes Thrive when we start winning the big bucks. There we freaking go. Yeah, let's hit some fantasy plays. Um, so what we'll do is we'll refresh, and then we'll go to sportsbooks. And then we're going to go to Thrive, Prize Picks, Underdog. Um, and also, this new like screen was released, so you can definitely check that out. Take advantage of this. It's pretty cool. And what's also really cool is there's a lot of bets out there. So early in the week, you can get some amazing middle opportunities between Prize Picks an underdog, right? So it's quite fascinating. So for example, you know, we've gone through a few of these plays earlier. Early lines, there's a lot of like five-yard receiving yard gaps between prize picks and underdog, right? You'll notice a few here. Here's a good one. Terry McLaurin, what do we think of him this weekend? Because prize picks has his receiving yards line at 53 and a half against the Titans. Underdog has it at 59 and a half. That's six yards. That's enough to beat the VIG if you know which side you should be on. What about Christian Kirk? 57, 64 and a half. That's like one reception. That's a big deal. What's the play here? I don't know because these are the only two sports books that have posted odds, but they're big discrepancies. Jalen Waddle, seven yards. 65 and a half to 72 and a half. I'm not sure what the play is, but there's definitely a play. So let's see what we got on Thrive, what we got on prize picks, what we got out there in general. So we'll refresh and we'll refresh and we'll refresh. And we can check this. So what do we already have open on Underdog? What did we already go with? If you want a tail. So we have Bader. You get a hit. Jake Oder is he under three and a half strikeouts. Gavin Lux to get a hit. And then we have, of course, this guy I only included in one entry. And these other two guys who haven't hit yet, Gavin Lux and Jake Oder is he, we included in two entries. So hopefully they these these hit. But this is what we got open. This, I believe, is still available. You can tail it if you want. A.J. Dillon under 57 and a half receiving rushing yards. Amari Cooper under 57 and a half receiving yards. Terry McLaurin under 59 and a half receiving yards. And let's see what's out there. It's refresh. I love refreshing. So what we can do is find some sharp as crap bets, and then we'll bet them, and then we'll make some money again today. And it's going to be good. Here's a play I like as well. Eh, eh, mm, eh. Cubs plus one and a half minus 200. Doesn't seem horrible. Jeffrey Springs over four and a half strikeouts. Doesn't seem horrible. Raiders Chiefs over eight and a half. Let's find some bets that we want to hit. A lot of bets. I hit the Giants for next week plus 340. I already bet that. Shit was good. So let's go here. Let's refresh. And let's find a play we can lock in and kind of roll with. Well, it seems like a slower day. Obviously, no NFL. Underdog, not much out there. Prize picks, you could create a five-pick flex, but nothing absurdly incredible. Kyle Isbell to get on base. Gabriel Arias to get on base. Zach Gallen over six and a half strikeouts. So this play looks good. This play looks good. 
you got something to pair it with on Thrive, but I don't know. We'll have to find something to pair it with, which we can definitely do here in a second. So we can actually try this screen. We can go to MLB and we can see if we can see anything. So let's go here and let's go to player hits. Let's check it out, see if we can find anything. May just be a slower day for fantasy and we're going to have to stick to sports books. Never know. Taco, oh, Taco Tuesday on prize picks. Good point. So what we can do is go here, over seven and a half, F it, seems good enough. These are typically good enough. And then you can just take the top play from, you know, you can play it in a two pick, whatever. You can go with Jeffrey Springs over four and a half strikeouts. Sure. So we'll go here and then we'll just go to Springs. And I'm only going to get 10 bucks, but sure. We'll take advantage of it. And that's our Taco Tuesday. So Zion Williamson, over seven and a half points, a very small play for us. This is Jeffrey Springs, over four and a half Ks. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add this to our sheet. Or no promos. So this is technically a promo, so I won't count it. Promos is cheating. Promos is always cheating. You can't count promos in your profit and loss of cheating. So we're not going to count it. But I do think it's good. It's a $10 play, whatever. Over seven and a half for Zion. Jeffrey Springs over four and a half strikeouts. Yo, everyone's a fan of this Thrive Fantasy now. Let's freaking go. Got to make this company famous for how bad we have beat them so far. Let's keep hitting it. So we're definitely going to have some plays on there, but we currently don't. There will be some value later. We'll stay online until we find a play on Thrive Fantasy. So what we can do as well is do they have Thrive Fantasy here? So you can check out the screen, player hits. So it doesn't look like Thrive is offering a ton of lines. Quite fascinating. Hmm. We got options, though. We got options. We got some options. We're going to find some great bets here. Yes, we are. And it's going to be a little bit of a shot in the dark, but we're going to find something to hammer. Absolutely. And it's going to be incredible. So how are we going to do this? Everyone load up the first play, if you have Thrive, of Cody Bellinger. This play looks good. So we'll refresh this, and let's see if anything pops up. It's a lot of prize picks today. Less underdog. I already hit out some underdog. So the first – well, let's see. When does this game start? So as a sharp batter, we're always looking for value. What happened to Bellinger? So – Minus 125, minus 121. You know, it doesn't seem as great anymore. Line's kind of slowly drifting. So maybe we skip that. But what we can do is go here. Back to the screen. And we can just look for where does Thrive have player hits. So here it's like, you know, Austin Hedges. That's minus 110 to get a hit on Caesar. So why would we play at minus 111? That'd be the dumbest thing in the world. So we're going to keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. So then things start to get a bit more interesting. We have Christopher Morel. Who is he? Nobody knows. And Chucky Robinson. Minus 175 on a couple sports books. I believe these are FanDuel knockoffs. So minus 165, minus 155 here. So maybe a little bit of value, but FanDuel, they don't have an under, so they juice these markets a lot more because they're not even showing you the other side of their market. So we can keep scrolling and be like, okay, what else we got? Jose Siri, this looks horrible, right? Minus 127, why would we take this when FanDuel was showing us minus 160 on a few others? Now things start to get a little more interesting. We got Jordan Luplau. Who is he? Don't know. But he's minus 185. Minus 170 on FanDuel. That seems quite good. See this one. What do we want to dabble with? So you can just kind of, I'm just kind of comparing the lines here on FanDuel to the lines here on Thrive. 
and seeing if we spot anything incredible. But so far, not really. This one looks like the best one, right? Sean Bouchard, minus 210 on FanDuel to get a hit. So minus 111 on Thrive. So that's great. But now the Cody Bellinger bet, I think it disappeared. So we're going to need something else. If we, if we can even find it. But I'm also getting a little bored because we've been looking at them and we haven't found anything. So here it is, Cody Bellinger. You know, so like, you know, what did we want to do? So if we go to the Dodgers game. F. We go to the Dodgers game and then we go to Bellinger get a hit and then we go back to this little screen thing and we wanted Sean Bouchard what we can see is okay what does this come out to on FanDuel in a same game parlay it comes out to plus 138 right so you're betting 100 to win 138 in profit what does this come out to on Thrive is we can go back here and we can go to Bellinger. So we have Sean Bouchard and Cody Bellinger. Okay. And this is plus 260, plus 138, betting 100 to win 138 in profit, betting 100 to win 260 in profit. We'll play it. So that's our second play of the day. Definitely some good value. You know, a little harder. You know, nothing beats this Nick Allen prop from yesterday. That one was incredible. But regardless, hopefully it's a big game for this one. So we have Sean Bouchard, one plus hit. Cody Bellinger, one plus hit in the Rockies game. That's awesome. Freaking demolishing these sports books. So let's go ahead. We'll go back here. We're hitting this for $100 to win $260 in profit, $360 total in this game's today. Yo, my guy, Cody. What's up, Cody? How are you doing? Cody, where does this come from? But um, he is he's a smart guy, so maybe. Anyways, let's get back to it. Let's hit some bets. Get a drink, hit some bets. Life's good. Let's go back to the sports books. We'll look at Thrive here in a bit. Hopefully, there's some more opportunity out there. We'll look here, see what's out there. Kind of using all the tools. I like using all the tools. They all present data in different ways. So, like the Sean Bouchard play, we never would have found on another tool. So, we got to, like, you know, kind of like go book to book and kind of, you know, look at data in different ways to identify these discrepancies. So if you're feeling the Cubs, that looks like a decent bet. Let me log back into a few of these sports books. They always be logging me out. But what we can do is just kind of refresh some of these, try to stay logged in, and hopefully make some more money today because we made a lot of money yesterday. Got it. Makes sense. So let's hit some more bets. Let's see what's out there. We'll look on Thrive. We'll look on these fantasy companies. So if you like betting on tennis and you have points bet, that looks pretty good. I currently don't have points bet pulled up, but that's an opportunity. So what I'm going to do is just kind of filter out points bet, points bet New York, resorts world bet, valley bet, books I don't have or I'm not logged into currently, but you should get every sports book. So you should click the links below, sign up. More sports books is always good, right? More outs, more positive EV bets. You need more sports books. They all offer you sign up bonuses too. So there's legitimately no reason not to get them. The Broncos are horrible. So we can take a look at this play because it's quite fascinating. So what we can do is go here and you can kind of see like, how do we feel about the under? 
most sports books kind of have it. Like Betfred has it favored. You know, so minus 105 doesn't jump off the page. It seems like Pinnacle is kind of the most bullish. Well, what I should do actually is go here. You can kind of like filter out sports books in your settings and things like this. So maybe you have these sports books. Maybe you care about them. I currently don't, right? What's very hard about being a profitable sports better, it's not even necessarily, you know, knowing what's a profitable bet when you see it, what's a really big line discrepancy or an arbitrage bet. But it's, um, it's kind of like sifting through all this data. Like if you just look at FanDuel for this one game, there's all these lines. They could be screwing up any of them. You have to hit a home run, to hit two plus home runs, to record a hit, to record two plus hits, correct score. All this stuff could be wrong and really good. I don't know. But you can't, you're a human. These odds are moving. You can't look through millions of odds by yourself in real time. So the whole goal of all of these different tools, kind of on Odds Jam, is to kind of highlight to you and the screen is to just kind of highlight to you like, yo, these bets look interesting and are worth checking out because there's a high likelihood of value. Because usually, because sportsbooks charge the big, it's hard to find good bets. Like, you're not just going to find them looking through FanDuel. Like, oh, Rockies plus 300, is that positive EV? It's like, probably not if we go to the Rockies game. Um probably horrible but i don't know so if we go to the rockies game we can take a peek and it's like yeah it's absolutely horrible their sports books offering plus 310 plus 330 like it's horrible so like that's not the way to find good bets the way to find good bets is you got to be you know using something to identify where the value is in the market and historical data is about as irrelevant as it comes like every game is different you can't look at aj Dillon's last game and be like oh well, he had 55 last game, so his rushing yard line should be at 55. It's like, well, no, because the game went into overtime. They played the Patriots, which is a completely different team, which is why real-time market data, just like the stock market, it encompasses all information available, right? His rushing yards line encompasses everything the world knows about him, the Giants, the Giants defense, who's playing for the Giants, who's playing for the Packers. Everything is priced in the market, Right. So you can see here, line movements are highlighted and color changes show you what they moved to. So Pinnacle just moved from minus 110 to minus 118 on Melvin Gordon over 53 and a half rushing yards. So here, you know, it's just kind of like easy to spot these big discrepancies. A.J. Dillon, seven yards off on the rush line, right? So, let's get to it. Let's hit some bets. I don't know. What we can do is just kind of uh, put everything here, reload, and see what's out there. But, you know, it's all just about sifting through all the crap um, and trying to realize what you care about because there's always so many bets, right? You got some arbs, you got all sorts of stuff. So these are middles. Middles are kind of cool. Sometimes they're a lot better, especially in player props. It'll just show you where sports books have their lines set at different levels. So like here in Oregon versus Arizona, it's like, oh, you know, Caesars is the only one with their line at 70 and a half. Well, as well as bet 365, but it's like, you know, most sports books have it at 70 whatever, maybe that half point in value is worth betting. It's probably not, but you get the point. Damn. So here's a great nerfy. At least seems decent enough to bet, maybe. And let's see what we want to bet on the sports books or on the fantasy companies. And here you still got that bet available on points bet, tennis. Why not? So what we can do is, oh, I got to change my state. Let's take a look here. And then we can go ahead and just be like, okay, like let's filter out points bet, 
points bet New York, Resorts World bet, Valley bet, and the Betfair Exchange. And now I have all the books I mainly use, and I can take a look at them. So the odds of this bet have changed, may no longer be available. Got to be quick, got to be faster. Oh, hell yes. Under one and a half rounds, Jordan Wright, let's go. UFC betting. What is more fun than betting on a guy to get knocked out as a minus 145 favorite in the before the second round even ends? Give me this bet. Absolutely, we are slamming this. So this bet seems incredible. What is more fun than betting on people to get knocked out? Nothing. So please take it. Boom. So we have the under one and a half for this fight for 1250 on October 15th. Forming our own portfolio. Same strategies apply. Beat the big and you make money. It's really that simple. You don't have to overcomplicate sports betting. Find bets that beat the big. Clearly are good. And just be logical. This bet is logically absurdly good. Bam. Hopefully a lot of you guys got to tail that. Market moves. Don't want to miss good bets. So hopefully people tailed that. Taco Tuesday on prize picks. We'll leave that one up because it's critical to always get the taco on Tuesday. Damn. This guy needs to go over. Their Taco Tuesdays always seem to lose, but kind of is what it is. So we have a great bet, 2.18% profit margin on that play. So we have this. And then we have a 2.18% profit margin, which is awesome. And we hit it for $12.50. $27 bucks in EVA. I'm $27 richer. And like it's clear as day that this bet was ridiculously good, right? So that's what it's all about. This is just rational, data-driven sports betting. Nothing complicated going on on odds share, really. Really is as simple as just presenting data in different ways that are useful and actionable as a sharp better, as a sports better. So we got some college football in the mix. That's cool. Heck yes. We got some baseball bets. Let's hammer them. So this bet we'll go through in a sec, but first I got to hammer it. So we're going to go here. We'll hit it. On FanDuel. So why do we like this bet? Why is this bet going to make us a lot of money in the long run? Well, the Betfair Exchange, which I definitely recommend you keep up. Um, it's very active. And it's a very like efficient market, whatever you want to think about. And it's peer-to-peer -peer betting. And as you get closer to game time, you'll see hundreds of thousands of dollars being bet on these exchanges. The Betfair Exchange, the biggest exchange in the world for sports betting. So it's really efficient, right? Four cents of juice. Here on Pinnacle, there's 15 cents. On WinBet, there's 40 cents. Four cents, 40 cents, right? So it's a great source of information only as you get close to game time, but of where the line should be set, right? So here, the no big odds would be like minus 118. So we have really high confidence that this bet is good. So it's 1140 bucks we have on this. So that bet is $14 in EV. If you tried to give me a $10 bill for that bet, I won't give you my bet because my bet is better. It's really that simple. So, and there you see it move. Probably because a lot of people hopefully got to tail it. And then you just refresh. You're day trading sports. You're investing in sports. You're finding bets that are value bets. You're an investor looking for bets on sale. Just like an investor looks for stocks on sale, you're looking for bets on sale. That's where you have an edge. Sportsbook doesn't have an edge, right?
So you can kind of flip between like all the different tools. It's what a lot of people do. You can use the arbitrage tool and they're all different slightly. So they all have different use cases slightly, you know, and you never know when the best bets are going to be on which tool and when there's going to be the best opportunities. I remember seeing some bets when sports betting first legalized at 3 a.m. in the morning, just wake up, use the restroom. Oh, wow. 70% arbitrage bet. Let me hit that. Go to bed $1,000 richer. So, you know, this bet, maybe you want to dabble in. Seems pretty good. FanDuel dropped this. This is the first bet we placed today. So we got Nerfy, minus 142. How do we feel about that? I mean, take a look. Kind of all the sports books. I like switching between states. Kind of you can see all the sports books, which is quite useful. So maybe you want to dabble in that. It doesn't jump off the page by any means, but still decent. Show what bet slip, bro. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Zero Bob? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Some people kill me. They kill me. What bet slip are you talking about? This bet slip, the bet slip we just hit, is right here. So move on. So let's see what we got. We got some MLB player props. We got some player hits props. But player hits props, definitely worth treading carefully. And oh, so here we see the bet. So maybe we do want to dabble. Let's go to the Brewers game. What's better than a good old nerfy at minus 142? Doesn't seem sketchy at all. Although we do got some good pitchers on the mound. So not a bad thing to absolutely crush this bet and demolish it. And of course, FanDuel logged me out. Freaking auto log out of the account before I can ever place a bet. What are you talking about, Zero Bob? Gonna kill me, man. Yeah, we're gonna be going live. I mean, we're hoping to go live more often, kind of show people how to use the tools in real time, things released, how to use data. I love that non sports. Find any reason ever to not do any work and just bet on sports. So let's reload, reload, reload. Why can't I see my little thing? Why isn't it verifying my location? Let's go, let's go, let's go. I got a bet to place. I got a bet to place. I got a bet to place. We'll reload, and there we go. Verified location. We can hit it. So we have Nerfy and Diamondbacks Brewers. Nerfy and Diamondbacks Brewers. 250 minus 142 odds. Positive EV bet. Don't have to overcomplicate it. Looking for value. 10-4. 10-4. 2.18% profit margin, so that's pretty cool. And we're literally... You know, essentially forming our own little portfolio of profitable bets. Every bet has an edge, so we're going to win in the long run, which is awesome. So I think it was 2.18. Yep, 2.18% profit margin. And we can see if any Thrive showed up, minus 111. So we have Bryson Stott. Seems okay. No absolute bangers like yesterday. Yesterday was incredible. This bet was incredible. It's one of the best bets I've seen in a while. Nick Allen to get a hit. Should have been like, should not have been on the board. Should have been two hits, but we got it. So we got some tennis in the mix. Seems quite good. Camille Maturik. Wednesday, 10 p.m. So we can go ahead. We can bet it. And against Krygos game spread. Okay. There's another bet. Pretty simple. Nothing magical going on here. So 250. And then this is tomorrow. So, again, if you're just tuning in, 6.7K in profit so far on live streams. Hopefully, you've been able to tail a lot of them. Hopefully, 
you know, you see the power of kind of having multiple sports books, right? You need multiple sports books. You need to browse odds. If you don't have FanDuel, you can't place this bet. Or you could place this bet at crap odds, right? You're like an investor who has to buy everything overpriced. So you got to find value. It's critical, critical, critical. Man. You know, I'm down to dabble. Some early NFL, low EV, but super low market width. So what you can do is just kind of like open up the exchanges and take a look. So here there's only four cents in market width. The under is juiced to minus 114. And you can take a look. And maybe this is about you place. Maybe it's not. So we can go here to the Panthers game. Then we can go to the total points line. And under 39 and a half, I mean, seems okay. Nothing to write home about, that's for sure. Um, Tennis has been brutal to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A lot of messages. Which Thrive Fantasy Player prop should I get in on? And um, just join the stream. Have you shown the lock for today? Yo, all of the bets we've been hitting have been doing quite well. So I don't believe in that specific word, but hopefully. So FYI, this matches tonight. Thank you. Yeah, they screw up start time sometimes. So we're hitting that tonight. Hopefully that hits tonight. You can see, wow. Plus 118, minus 110. Plus 118, minus 110. Plus 118, minus 110. Hmm. So what we can do is just like refresh, see what else is out there. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Shoot. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. So all I was saying was this bet. Plus 118, minus 110. Plus 118, minus 110. That's the last bet we hit. So I think my screen will share it in that time. So we have the Nerfy. So we have plus 118, minus 110. Camille Madcharzek, plus four and a half against uh, Nick Krigos. And then we also have under three and a half. This bet was the first bet we went through. We uh, added Nerfy in Diamondbacks Brewers. So a bunch of bets with an edge. The profit margin of that tennis play was, what, 2.08%. So if we look at the bets, we placed our last four bets, 52 bucks in profit margin. Not particularly bad. Again, the sheet's in the description if you want to follow along with our live profit and loss, which we're up 6.7K. Not up bad. What are you on tonight? A lot of things, man. A lot, a lot of things. What, do we, what are we on tonight? We are on... You can check the sheet in the description. You can check the sheet in the description. But one of the things we're on is Gavin Lux to get a hit, Jake Odorizzi lower than three and a half strikeouts, and then Colton Wong to get a hit. So we got some MLB props in the mix. Screen Allen. Um, show your bet slip for Thrive Fantasy for today. Okay, man, we got you. So if we go to my props, what we can see is just the bet slip. So we have upcoming. We have Sean Bouchard to get a hit and Cody Bellinger to get a hit. Two players, same game. Both are going to get a hit. We're going to win. And it wasn't as good as the ones from yesterday. So slightly slower day, only MLB. So we hit these two props. Bro, I have no idea who Odds Monkey is. I don't care about other companies. I don't care. So what we can do is hit some other bets. <sighs> okay. So let's see what else is out there. We have Man City minus one and a half against FC Copenhagen. So I guess that's Nations League. That's an option. Some first half Asian handicaps. We have the Yankees over four and a half team total. Take a look at that. I mean, Bet Online has it favored. FanDuel, that looks incredible. So, what we can do is at that.
and um, let's hit it. So we have over four and a half runs team total for the Yankees. I mean, right. Bet online has this favored pinnacle has this minus one Oh six, only 16 cents in width. DraftKings has this, you know, even odds would be the true price according to DraftKings. So obviously this seems pretty good, right? I mean, just look at the odds. There is one, two sports books that have this favored. FanDuel has the over favored. DraftKings has it as a coin flip, minus 115 on both sides. So the zero big line would be plus 100. So this plus 105 is plus EV to FanDuel, DraftKings, Bet Online, and Pinnacle. So it's obviously an incredible bet. So we want to go here, and then we want to go to, and it moved. So it moved. You miss some. It's just part of the game. Be faster. Don't talk as much. And that's typically how you do it. What was the Brewers bet? Nerfy, Diamondbacks Brewers. That's what we have. So from this live stream, we have five bets. Okay, we have five bets for today. We have first half under three and a half was the first bet we hit on this live stream right here for 196.70. First half under three and a half, Nats, Mets, game two. Then we have the Nerfy and Diamondbacks Brewers. We have this game spread, tennis play. So these two plays, top and bottom right here. And then we have, what else did we add today? So that's one. Under seven and a half, Giants Padres we added right here. Boom. So that's bet number four. We have this bet, under one and a half, Jordan Wright. I love that play. 1250 minus 145 odds was an incredible line. Play five and then play six is Thrive Fantasy. Sean Bouchard to get a hit, Cody Bellinger to get a hit. So that's our six plays so far. So hopefully you guys have been able to tail some of them, if not all of them. Yeah, dude, gamble more. Thank you for adding EuroLeague to Odds Jam. Of course. I hope so, too. I'm always hoping so. Thank you for adding EuroLeague basketball. Of course. Of course, of course. Hopefully we can find some good bets on it. So let's see what else we got kind of in the mix for today. And again, you really want to use all the tools, right, to... Um, you know, it's all just different presentations of data. So it's really, Ooh, <sighs> baby. We got another one. Lamonte Wade to get a hit. We're going to be all over this play here in a second. Ooh, Ooh, we got under four and a half. Give me that tigers Mariners. Why are only two bucks posting odds for it though? Not sure. So maybe we skip it because that's a little strange. Where are the other books? Why aren't they posting odds for that play? Is something happening? Did the pitcher get injured? I don't know. So we can take a peek. So I guess that game's starting. Ooh. Aaron Nola to get a hit. Austin Nola. Not Aaron Nola to get a hit. So you got the ass. That play looks incredible. If you have Bally bet, Astros minus one and a half. But what we want is Lamonte. Great. That looks incredible. So then what we want to do is go back here. We want to turn off filters. We want to hit the refresh button real quick. And we want to see what's out there. then we can go to the middle tool check that out there's tons of cool things in life to check out so then we can see if there's anything on thrive here no there's not so then maybe we try the low holds tool and we refresh and we see if there's anything cool to see and maybe there is maybe there isn't we'll figure it out together so not really under six runs goals or over six in Hurricanes, Sabres. Um, I'm 
wild. Under seven and a half. What up, B? Possible pitching change in Mariners game. Have you bet on underdog today? And if you did, who are you betting on? We bet on Jake Odorizzi. He's too handsome to be good at baseball, I feel as if. Under three and a half strikeouts. Harrison Bader already got. And then we have Colton Wong to get a hit. So a couple plays. And then a brief NFL play, but that was more, you know, this is more like finger to the wind. This one was great. This one was great. So let's go back. See what else is out there. That looks quite good. Michael Lorenzen, strikeouts. So what we can do is just go to FanDuel, and we can type in this guy's name, try to navigate there quicker than you guys are, and then we can hit him real quick. And then, of course, FanDuel logs me out. So, of course, you have to log back in because they don't want more of your money, and they don't want you betting more, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll reshare our screen once we're re-logged in, and then we'll – refresh FanDuel, I guess, because it's not verifying my location. And then we'll hit this for as much as they give me, which is 102, because they're like, yo, you beat us too much. And then they'll auto-log me out. So we have Michael Lorenzen over 4.5 Ks. Minus 102 for 100 bucks. 102 bucks at minus 102 odds on 10-4. So then we have this guy um, with a 3.67% profit margin, or this was a $102 bet, 3.67% profit margin, 374 in EV, $55 in total profit margin. That doesn't even include some of the plays we just forgot to add. So that makes our seventh bet of the day. So that's pretty cool. So then we refresh. And then we can see what else is out there together. And then we can refill our drinks and call it a night. And then we can see what else is out there. So I feel like there was a play I was going to hit, but now I forget. So we'll refresh and we'll see if there's a new play we want to hit. And we got the cool new little screen. And... Um, so Austin Nola seems quite tasty, quite quite good. Just looking at data, trying to tease out what bets beat the big and have value in the long run because that's what makes money sports betting long term. So what we can do is we can search for minus 111, see if there's any plays on Thrive. Nope. So what we can do is search minus 122. Any plays on underdog? Not right now. So that's not fun. So we can refresh, see if anything else is out there. And we got three bets open. The sheet's in the description. This bet still looks good. We played it plus 122 earlier. Now it's plus 116. Still looks good. This still looks good, minus 142. Nerfy in the Diamondbacks game, we already bet it. So that's awesome. We got Justin Verlander. Over six and a half strikeouts, you could play that. Nerfy in the Phillies game. Texas A&M over 13 and a half. Against Alabama. Scary bet. Phillies. And then you drop below 1%. And then maybe you can see what's out there. It's all just about spending time sports betting and aggressively looking to win so we have lamonte wade so what we could do is go back to this little screen button now on odds jam and then we can go to mlb and we can go to player hits and then we can see if 
if anything new came up. But I think what I want to look at is if they still have this guy, Sean Bouchard, still there. So what you can also do is just kind of like, you know, maybe that's good. I mean, Caesars has a minus 143 to get a hit. So Caesars has this guy to get a hit at minus 143. So what we can do is kind of take a peek just like looking for where the over is best at minus 111. Looks like there's a lot of plays you could go with. I mean, Shea Longoliers to get a hit, minus 111, that also doesn't seem terrible. I mean, there's a lot of plays. There's always a lot of plays, but Stott to get a hit doesn't seem terrible, minus 111. So you could play a bunch of these. So the ones that look decent, nothing is as good as the ones from yesterday, but it's Cody Ballinger. Sean Bouchard on Thrive, on Thrive Fantasy. Cody Bellinger, Sean Bouchard. I got to take like a list so I remember what to bet. So we got Sean Bouchard, Cody Bellinger. So we got Bellinger. Then what else looks decent? You got Lamonte Wade. So if we go here. You got Wade minus 111. So that looks pretty good. So we have Wade. So that makes three. It's pretty easy to find good plays. We have Shea Longoliers minus 111. So that makes play four. So Longoliers, Wade, Bouchard, Bellinger. And there's a link below to sign up for Thrive. Again, it's a good option to have in your toolkit. We have Stott. Bryson Stott. So that's play five. So you kind of pick any of them, any amount you want to go with. They all look good at minus 111, which again is the price that you're getting on Thrive. So those are five players you could possibly go with. We said Scott, Longoliers, Wade, Bouchard, Bellinger. None of these guys are like home runs, but they all look a little decent on Thrive. Best prize picks right now for a five-pick flop, so let's make some freaking money. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you usually handle something like multiple run lines on the same game that are all plus EV? You bet them all or you bet the one with the highest EV? Bet them all or the one with the highest EV? Of course, of course, odd screen looks cool. These MLB games are meaningless tonight. Weird things can happen in these games. That is not a mathematical argument, so I'm not even going to respond to that. Not even worth it. Best prize picks right now for a five-pick flex. Let's take a look. So we can go here, and then you can just go here, and you can be like, okay, you can just select prize picks. So best five-pick flex on prize picks is going to be – I don't even know if there's five picks out there that look great in a five-pick flex. So we're not going to gamble on prize picks right now, but we can go to Thrive, and we can go to Underdog and see if there's anything there we want to bet. Who is texting me? Hopefully not my parents. <laughs> kidding, kidding. So let's go to all sports books. And then we can go to remove a resorts world, remove points bet, remove Bally bet, remove Betfair exchange. You see what's out there? 
And then we can go back to this arbitrage pool, see what's out there as well. So maybe we dabble in some of the ones I mentioned. So we have Wade. That looked quite good. And then we have – what did we like best? So now I don't even remember. So we had Wade. We wanted to look at Bellinger. So Bellinger, meh, decent. Longoliers, decent. Stott, Wade. Eh. Maybe we skip it. Maybe we wait for another day here. But if we had to pick one, what would we want to go with? We would want to go with... Let's remove that. Longoliers. Hmm, what would we want to go with? So, we probably want to go with Bouchard. That looks pretty good. So, I'm going to go with him. We already bet him and Bellinger together. So, and then let's decide between Stott and Longoliers. So, here, I don't know. Stott, Bouchard, Stott, how do we feel about that? Longoliers. So honestly, what I do kind of like is Stott and Bouchard. So what we can do is we can go back here. And again, there's a link to sign up. I highly recommend you get this platform because we literally have been destroying it. And you're going to miss out. So we can go here and we can hit this ish for $300. So $300, this is 300 to 3.6 times your entry, which basically means plus 260 odds. We crushed them like yesterday. We crushed them the day before. And we plan to continue to keep crushing them. That is the plan, at least. So we just added Bouchard and Stott, which is pretty cool, at plus 260. So we added Bouchard, hit, Stott, hit. $300 at plus 260 odds for today. And again, the sheet with all the bets is in the description. So if we went here and we were like, oh, word, nice bet, Alex. Thanks, man. What would the odds be if you were to create this on Caesars? And it would be like, okay, Stott? No. What team is Stott on? Who is this guy? Who are you? He's on Houston. He would be on Houston. So betting on hits is very stressful. So if you like stress and that's the type of sports betting you're into, you will love betting on players to get hits, especially when you know you have an edge. So on Caesars, this parlay would come out to plus 177. Betting 100 to win 277. Or 300 to win 832. We're getting 100. 300 to win 1,080. 300 to win 1,080 or 300 to beat 832. That's how you beat the big. Um, um, let's go. Let's go. What do you mean? That's awesome. And that's great. And what you could have gone with is who was the last person we were debating was that Longoliers guy. So maybe we got to dabble in him a little. But it just looks a little worse. So 
right? We're using data like this, you know. So when you're betting on Thrive, you're betting at minus 111 odds. FanDuel had this minus 210. Caesars minus 143. Honestly, meh. Uh, we'll double down. So I hit that thousand dollar max now on Bouchard. So now we have nine hundred dollars total on this Bouchard to get a hit and Sot to get a hit. Bouchard and Stott. Over, over, over is feast. Refresh. Longeliers also looked good, and we were also looking at Wade, and we had a small play on Bellinger. Good plays on prize picks. Five pick flex. Nerfy, Rays, Red Sox. First half total points Washington, ASU, Tempe, Arizona, Arizona State University, under 29 and a half points. Yes, run first inning. Tigers, Mariners. Options. Always good to have options. So I'm going to call it for now. We hit a F ton of bets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are up 6.7K on live stream. I fully intend to get this to 100K. Let's make some freaking money, guys.